seconds late because we had a tough time logging on to Facebook there, but we are now here. Happy Monday morning to you, my dear friends, and welcome to today's edition of Good Day Grenada. It is, let's see here, yeah, the second day of March. Well, welcome, March. Thank you for joining us. I'm George Grant, and uh, here's what's cooking this morning. We're going to begin this morning by remembering the days of trust. How many of you do? Trust by our shopkeepers. Yeah? Do a little uh, head scratching there, and uh, you won't have to wait too long. You'll find out in just a wee bit what we're talking about. So uh, hang in there, okay? Then we're also going to pay tribute to the gentleman who's going to be laid to rest on uh, Thursday of this week. The late Sir Royston Hopkin. A little piece done for us on the weekend by uh, good old Margaret. Then we do have the National Report for you. And yeah, I actually have one third of the Bain sisters coming to sit right here in that chair. And the other two are going to be joining us electronically, as far as I know. So uh, there you have it. That's uh, on today's edition of Fiscal Alert. All right. Now, let's settle down and see uh, what we got lined up. Well, we know what we got lined up. So let's get started. I haven't heard, we haven't heard from Anthony for a couple of weeks. All right. But he does these great little pieces, which make us flash back in time. And this morning is no exception. Anthony has a little piece which, as you listen to this, you're going to smile, and I'm sure it's going to bring back an awful lot of memories. So, uh, without much ado, let's take a look. And today, I think of the shopkeepers, and specifically the word trust. Trust. I know you can think of shopkeepers in your neighborhood where I lived. I think of a man called Mr. Sandiford. I think of Mr. Marshall. Mr. Jones. And uh, there were others. Mr. Rush. Many shopkeepers. And they did the pay their part to help out people who were struggling to make ends meet. Miss Kennedy in River Road, I think, had a shop. Important people. So here goes. Trust me. It's true. Come here, boy. Go down to the shop. Trust a half pound of pigs now. Three eleven bread, a quarter pound a cake butter, carbolic soap, two red spots and a pint of lard oil. Take that can, can you see there and on your way back, pass by the Bowser and buy half a gallon of pitch oil. You know pitch oil, remember the word pitch oil? Yes, lard oil, and that was the oil of choice. We use it to fry our bakes, put in our saltfish sauce. Well, nowadays we have all kinds of oil, vegetable oil, corn oil, canola oil, olive oil. See, olive oil is very good for you. All kinds of oil. But I remember a lot of oil. We even had castor oil, <laughs> and Canadian eating oil. And don't forget the coconut oil. Man, when you eat piece of fish with coconut oil, corn fish, coconut oil and a piece of avocado, man is heaven or not. Recently I bought some nutmeg oil in Grenada. You know nutmeg oil can make Grenada famous because many would tell you it has healing capabilities. Trust Lord Oil, yes trust. Trust was a big, real popular, everybody used to trust. Rich people too. Even big shots, they did so. 
and it says a hell of a lot about the shopkeepers who are part of the community. Now if you live in St. Paul, the shopkeepers there, they got to know you, and more important, the ability to pay to when the month ended. They were a smart bunch, believe me. They had a very good sense of the customer's income and disposable income. Even those who had no steady job used to trust and were trusted by shopkeepers. The shopkeeper knew about the susu or when the child's father got paid. He knew when the woman get paid. He knew the man who had the woman on the side, you know, the side woman. And that man used to pay for the goods that she trusted. The shopkeeper knew that. And he knew the woman who loved to mind men and men who loved to mind women. So trust was an important word and it was significant that many of those who trusted did not bother to mark down what people took or when they took it. They had a very good memory. And it was a nice agreement between business people their shopkeepers and their customers. They trusted each other. Hear the word trust again. Well, the best people to trust were barbers and taxi drivers. They got paid every day. Dock workers on the pier in St. George's, they got paid regularly too. So while others were waiting for the month to end to see a paycheck, those workers, man, they had coins jingling in their pockets all the time. And there were no computers then. Shopkeepers wrote the names of those who trusted in the notebooks in no particular order. All did not have to worry. The names were all, would always pop up at the end of the month. There was a shopkeeper who used to wait till the end of the month and go to the, the junction and call out all the names of those who failed to pay. A number of shopkeepers used the big government ledger book to keep their records. Others went to Brighton and Miners and they bought notebooks. They were entered into the books. So the salt beef, the cooking oil, flour and salt fish, the people trusted until they were able to pay, were all put into the notebook. That's those shopkeepers who chose to do that. But as I said, some kept it in their heads. Now, don't believe for a one single moment that all shopkeepers love to trust. In fact, some even had signs in their shops that read like this. Don't ask for Mr. Trust. He is dead and buried. And there was a picture of the dead Mr. Trust in a coffin. In one shop, I saw a sign that said, Eggs have no right in Rockstone Dance. Another warned, When you trust, you bust. Now one shopkeeper in Morris went so far as to call out the names of bad pay people. Now, we remain thankful. Thankful for our shopkeepers. Just the way we remain indebted to the fishermen of Grenada. Many shopkeepers, like Mr. Selwyn Marshall, Mr. Sandiford, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sandiford, Mr. Jones, they were good to poor people who were struggling and they made it possible for them to eat the daily bread and a little butter too until they had money to pay. So today, I say thanks to all the shopkeepers and you know the shopkeepers who live in your neighborhood who trusted Grenadians. Big them up. Anthony Wendell the Ritz. Good morning, Mr. Anthony Wendell the Ritz.
Good morning, Mr. Anthony Wendell DeRiggs. Yes, sir. Good one, boy. Good one. Brought back a lot of memories for me. Now, let's take a look very quickly here. Facebook is really, really slow with me here this morning, so I'm going to try and bring this to you as I can. Hey, Mags is first this morning. Oy, 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 she didn't sleep last night. Mags is first this morning. Kept on second. T.F. Richards in Ohio this morning. On the road as usual. Ryan is second in the morning, and uh, he says, nutmeg oil and nutmeg spray. Good for arthritic pain. So you trust some of that stuff, right, Brian? Uh, I see that. Hey, Anthony, I'm glad to see that you're there. So you saw that we uh, played a little piece there. Oswald Darrow is there with us as well. So is Roger Williams. Margaret says, trust, eh? A lot of these shopkeepers were also unscrupulous. I've heard stories of a lot of people who lost their property to these shopkeepers. Because a lot of times, these poor people didn't keep their own records. <laughs> Happens today as well, Max. Sure does. Oswald says, they rigged the scales. And <laughs> in some instances, 14 ounces was equivalent to a pound. Well, you got bitten too, eh, Ozzy? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good morning, TF. Okay, now, let's uh, move on. On a sadder note. Sir Royston Hopkins will be laid to rest on Thursday, following a service at 1 o'clock in the afternoon at the Grenada Trade Center. He was 75 years old at the time of his passing, which was on uh, February 22nd. And that happened following a successful medical procedure. Apparently he was recovering at a hotel when he complained of feeling unwell and had to be returned to the hospital. Over the weekend, our friend, Margaret Francis, put together a beautiful little tribute to Sir Royston. And that, my dear friends, is what uh, I uh, hope to be sharing with you, except that it seems to have <laughs> uh, disappeared here. Just, uh, just hang on a sec. Just give me half a sec here. Let me see if we can form it. Yeah, dee, 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 dee. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so we're going to blow that up. And now, here comes Margaret's tribute to Sir Royston Hopkins. With a final flyover, Grenada solemnly welcomed home the body of beloved, honored, and respected hotelier Sir Royston Hopkins. Moments later, sirens heralded the final drive past his beloved Spice Island Beach Resort amidst sounds of grief as Grenadians prepared for the final goodbye. Sir Royston Hopkin, owner and chairman of the award-winning Spice Island Beach Resort in Grenada, died following complications from heart surgery. Sir Royston was one of the Caribbean's most successful and accomplished hoteliers who was known for his work and contributions to tourism development in Grenada and throughout the Caribbean. His storied career began at age 18 after dropping out of the Grenada Boys Secondary School to begin work at his parents' guest house. Well, I've been in the business for over 26 years, just about 26 years. 
Um, I started off working with my parents at the Ross Point Inn and eventually get branched out on my own a few years later and I now own the Spice Island Inn on Grand Dance Beach and the Blue Horizons Cottage Hotel. From 28 rooms, Sir Royston nurtured and elevated the Spice Island Beach Resort into a 64-room, six-star luxury resort that has become synonymous with elegant luxury. Its famous clientele have included U.S. presidents and British royalty. Sir Royston credited his success to a dedication to excellence and a commitment to exceeding the guest experience. If you try to operate to get an award, you're operating for the wrong reason. So therefore, we just try to exceed our guest expectations. You have to have a pension for excellence. You have to know in your particular segment of the market what are the expectations of your guests. It's simple as that. That commitment to excellence led to Sir Royston being the recipient of many prestigious awards, including the coveted Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association Hotelier of the Year, the Grenada Board of Tourism Nutmeg Award, Lifetime Achievement Awards from the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, and the Star Diamond Award from the American Academy of Hospitality Sciences. In 2004, he was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II for his contributions to the Caribbean and Grenada's tourism, becoming the only Caribbean hotelier to receive this honor. Sir Royston was well known for his philanthropy, especially in the area of education. You don't empower yourselves with a good education. Your chances of getting by are very, very slim if you do not have a sound education. True to his belief, Sir Royston established the Sir Royston Hopkins Scholarship Award, which has awarded more than 200 scholarships to students in financial need. Over his career, Sir Royston served as president of the Grenada Hotel and Tourism Association, president of the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, and chairman of the Caribbean Alliance for Sustainable Tourism. He is survived by his wife, Lady Betty Hopkins, and three children. For Sir Royston, it was a wonderful journey that has left his beloved Spice Island Beach Resort well placed for the future. It has been a wonderful journey. Um, today we now have um, 64 suites. Um, we sit on 1,600 feet of beach and we are well placed as one of the major or better boutique resorts on planet Earth. There you have it. Tribute to the late Sir Royston Hopkins, who's going to be laid to rest one o'clock this coming Thursday down at uh, the Grenada Trade Center. Well, Burns, um, let's take a quick little break here and then uh, we'll come back with the national report. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. One more for the road. Look, I find you had a little too much to drink, you know. Let me drive. No, man, I good, I good. Alcohol causes drowsiness, slow response time distorted vision, impaired decision-making, blackouts, decreased coordination. Drinking water does not make you less drunk. Never drink and drive. It takes only a second. I'm really, really sorry. Sorry? <laughs> sorry can't bring back my sister. <laughs> You've been drinking. I can smell it. Why? <laughs> This message is brought to you by this group of insurance companies, the Traffic Advisory Body, and the Traffic Department. Together with you, our customers, we energize our community. Together with you, 
we energize our economy. We are working together to give our nation a better tomorrow. With you, we energize our future. Together, we energize our nation. Thank you for partnering with us as we energize our Spice Island. Brenlec, energizing our Grenada. Grenada's COVID-19 public health threat level raised to high. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Friday, February 28th, 2020, I am Rikisha St. Louis. The Ministry of Health has raised its public health threat alert level to high. Orange or high level means a very high possibility expected and this condition applies when a credible threat of increased infectious diseases exists of disruptive public health activity or activities with a direct or specific threat against the health sector or country and its dependencies. The decision was taken in accordance with the Ministry's Infectious Diseases Public Health Threat Level Response Protocols at the daily COVID-19 briefings with the Health Minister Honorable Nicholas Steele and his team managing the current threat of the coronavirus. In taking the decision, the Ministry of Health considered the Caribbean Public Health Agency's CAFA situation report number 15, which concluded that the risk for the Caribbean is now moderate to high. Grenadian health authorities, keeping a very close eye on the outbreak of COVID-19, indicated that they are also tracking travelers from Japan, South Korea, Iran, Singapore, and Italy, which have seen steady increases in the number of confirmed cases. The Ministry of Health said it is presently monitoring the situation in the rest of Europe, the United States, North and South America, and any other region where community transmission has been established. Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Francis Martin told the GIS that at this time, all options are being considered and the system is in full response mode. The Ministry acting on sound advice from its local, regional and international public health experts would like to remind the general public that its importation transmission watch remains in full effect for the entire Tri-Island. In related news, the World Health Organization on Friday raised its global risk assessment of the new coronavirus to its highest level after the epidemic spread to sub-Sahara Africa. The virus has proliferated around the globe over the past week, emerging on every continent except Antarctica, prompting many governments and businesses to try to stop people traveling or gathering in crowded places. COVID-19 has killed more than 2,800 people and infected over 83,000 worldwide, the vast majority in China, since it emerged apparently from an animal market in a central Chinese city in late December. There are no confirmed cases in the Caribbean to date. Here at home, the Sustainable Development Council met with Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Francis Martin on Friday to discuss issues related to the virus. Spencer Thomas, chairman of the Sustainable Development Council, says while the internet is a good source of information, the information posted by some can be misleading. So the main goal is to, is to really ventilate issues relating to the coronavirus. We, thought, we found that there are many issues in the social media on coronavirus. There are a lot, a lot of statements all over the place, and we believe that it is important to hear from the, the professionals themselves. Hence, we invited Dr. Martin to be here to give us the real information on coronavirus. He urges the general public to listen to the health officials. Well, I think the issue here is that we need to, in terms of the coronavirus, what we're hearing from, from the practitioners at the, at the moment is that we need to be very careful with this issue. It's a very difficult um, and dangerous um, situation. 
but that we need to listen to the professionals and not, not necessarily all of the issues that we're hearing in the social media. Continuing with the news, the Ministry of Legal Affairs has given assurances that the Registry of the Supreme Court will not be temporarily closed while problems with its current location are addressed. The Ministry has dismissed as false and misleading claims in recent reports of an imminent shutdown of the Registry. Minister for Legal Affairs Honorable Kendra Matherin Stewart said the reports of an imminent closure are completely untrue and explained that what is happening is that the staff and registry functions are being relocated. She further stated that the acting registrar has been in communication with the members of the Bar Association to keep them appraised of all the developments. The minister confirmed that temporary arrangements are in place to facilitate lodgement of deeds at the Parliament building effective Monday 2nd March to Wednesday 11th March 2020. All other operations will continue or remain at the Church Street compound until March 11th. Thereafter, to facilitate continued access to information from deeds and land registry, the registry together with the Ministry of Infrastructure will make arrangements to re for remote connectivity or access to the existing servers. The entire operation of the registry will be relocated during the month of March to the second floor of the Coach J. McCormick building on Church Street, which also houses modern photo studios. The relocation of the Supreme Court registry has become necessary because the compound on Church Street that currently houses the main operations of the registry is an urgent need of repairs and interventions will be planned and executed under the supervision of the Ministry of Infrastructure Development and Implementation. In recognition of this, the government of Grenada over the, past, over the last month began the process of planning the relocation of the operations of the registry. The Minister for Legal Affairs reiterated that there are no plans to discontinue operations of the registry and every effort will be made to ensure that the public is kept informed of the actions being taken. This is the National Report. We'll have more news after the break. Welcome back. Grenada's permanent representative to the Organization of American States, Yolan Smith, has signed a 20 million US dollar disaster risk management development credit policy for Grenada with a deferred drawdown option for catastrophe risk, the CAT DDO. The CAT DDO provides Grenada with a contingent financing in case of natural disasters while supporting the country's reform program to build multi-sectoral resilience to disaster and climate risk. It was signed with World Bank Director Tassid Said and is the first CAT DDO approved for the Latin America and the Caribbean region financed by the International Development Association, IDA, the concessional financing arm of the World Bank. The line of credit is expected to strengthen the viability of Grenada's contingency financing arrangements in the event of a catastrophe triggered by natural hazards, including public health-related events. The credit facility will also support the efforts of the government to implement the recently approved disaster risk financing strategy, which was developed with World Bank technical support. Continuing with the news, the Ministry of Infrastructure Development and Implementation says rehabilitation work will begin on the Pearls Bridge on Monday. A contract for work to be undertaken was awarded in December. The material to commence work was received on Friday, 20th February. Work is expected to last two weeks and the ministry is working towards opening the bridge on or before March 20th. 
Finally, in the news, officials of Spice Mask Cooperation and the Ministry of Culture assured soca artists returning from Trinidad and Tobago that they are all winners. On Friday, permanent secretary in the Ministry of Culture, Desri Stevens, and CEO of Spice Mask, Kelvin Jacobs, met the three Grenadian artists, Looney Spark and Electrify, and Skinny Banton, upon arrival at the Morris Bishop International Airport following their participation in the 2020 International Soka Monarch in Trinidad. P.S. Stevens told the gathering during a short reception that Grenada is proud of their performances and will continue to support them as they keep the flag flying not only in the region but internationally. Although we don't have the crown, in our books they are winners because they went out there and they truly represented Grenada Soka, Grenada culture on the regional scene and they, it's something they continue to do. They fly that flag high wherever they go and we are extremely proud of them for what they would have accomplished prior and during this season in Trinidad. So we want to welcome them back officially, let them know that we are extremely proud of their achievements and that we will continue to support them whenever they go out there to represent because they're not doing it for themselves. They're representing Grenada, Karikou and Piti Matnik. CEO Kelvin Jacobs encouraged them to not be daunted by the results of any competition. He explained that their presence and participation will take them further in the art form. I was there in person to see you at the, um, the performance and your performance was exceptional. The people who are around me, they looked at your performance and they were in awe at your performance. We know what the results turned out to be, but for me, I just want to tell you that you are bigger than the results, you are bigger than the judges who sit there and put a score next to your music. The people who are there, they knew what your, your worth is, and the people who are viewing and promoters, etc., they would see your music and they would value your worth, and it would take you further from Soka Monarch stage in Trinidad. So do not be despondent by the results. We know that you, are, you did very well, you did your best, and we are indeed proud of you. The artist spoke about the experience in Trinidad and how they are gearing up for Spice Mass 2020. Our third time, you know, partaking, and we're so happy to represent Grenada to the fullest. We went today, we do our best, and um, as you mentioned, we are winners in our own rights. Um, coming out of the competition, just the feedback from people in Trinidad, away from Trinidad, the diaspora, messages, DMs, um, we feel very happy to represent, and we went out there, we did, did our best to represent Grenada, I represent ourselves, represent our brand. Um, Skinny as well, you know, did very well in the competition. And that for us is a win. We have to be prepared. You know, you say prepare for a disaster. <laughs> we have to be prepared. Um, the folks are coming, they want to see what we have to offer. They heard, never experienced the job, um, never experienced the vibes, the soca music, and it's infectious. So we just need to do what we need to do from now. Um, we have the responsibilities to put great music out there. Um, and the owners and the government to ensure that we put on a product that the world can um, talk about. Representing Grenada and representing the people of Grenada, I was happy to know everybody was tuning. Well, not everybody, but majority of the people was tuning on all the live. I remember Karuku having a live screen and all that different stuff. So it bring more motivation, it bring more vibes to continue going on and continue doing what is necessary. But I was happy to represent Grenada. Everything didn't play the way we expected and we wanted it to. But Hopefully next time we live to fight another day. That story just ended the national report for today, Friday, February 28th. Let's recap the top story. Grenada's COVID-19 public health threat level raised to high. On behalf of the entire news team here at the Government Information Service, I am Rikisha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time.
folks, there you have it. That was Friday's edition of the National Report, brought to you by the GIS. Now, uh, let me take a quick look, because I think there's some comments here. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. We're just going to scroll back a little bit. Okay. Uh, Margaret says, well, it's in the Caribbean now. She's referring to the virus. Yeah, I heard it's in St. Martin and St. Bethany, I think it is. And uh, in addition to that, uh, San Domingo, I think it is, or Haiti, wherever. Um, yeah. And now there are two deaths in uh, Seattle, Washington State. And in addition to that, the total death toll is now over 3,000. Okay? T.F. Richard says, it's not if or but, in my opinion, when it gets to our shores. It's reported that it's in the French Caribbean. Yeah. We just have to implement our own emergency and safety mechanisms at the stage. Um, Anthony says, brother, we're listening to the professionals when they talk about the coronavirus. But they, too, are baffled. <laughs> you ain't kidding, Anthony. You, I don't envy these guys. These guys. I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. Um, I think they're just going on the best knowledge they have about science, medicine. TF says, Lord, we're going to rent again. Build a hall of justice, for heaven's sakes. It can surely pay for itself. You built a stadium and a house of parliament that cannot and aren't paying for themselves. Ah, uh, yes, TF. Let's see. Uh, da -da -da. Anthony wants to know what's the latest on the condition of the Molinaire Road. I haven't been out there, Anthony, and I haven't heard anything from uh, the administration lately about that. Um, TF says, I can't understand why the bridge is still there. The bridge and Simoon, along with a couple others, are temporary bridges to be used in disaster times until a permanent one is erected. But since after Ivan, these bridges were put down, but never removed. Scares me to go near that place. Uh, Ryan says, our Pearls Bridge is going to be fixed and reopened in March 2020. Well, wow, Ryan, thanks for the news. Uh, okay, folks, um, let me, uh, just let me show you. I mentioned to you that one-third of the Bain sisters would be joining us this morning. Take a look, there she is. There, there is uh, good old Janice. And uh, for whatever reason, it seems like uh, that's not Janice, that's Gemma. That's Gemma. Get it right, George. Um, but for whatever reason, Janice and Laurel appear to be having some difficulty getting in this morning, where we can tell that Janice is logged in, but uh, for whatever reason, we're not seeing her picture. Pretty face. Hiding from us this morning. So we're going to take a little break here, and hopefully they will show up during this break. If not, Gemma and I will simply have a uh, little tete-a-tete. -tete. We can always find something to talk about. And we'll be back after this break. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and the 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. I'm always on the move. Training. Traveling. Competing. 
So it's good to know I have Quad Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing e-banking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Cooperative Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. Welcome All vehicle owners, inspection and licensing continues. And at Hubbard's, we want you to be ready. From February 16th to March 31st, registration numbers 2,501 to 5,000 with single registration letter. Or registration numbers 251 to 500 with plural registration letters will receive 11% off new torque tires and power max batteries. Don't get caught unprepared. Visit us today at the Motor Department in Mongay or the Tire Bay in Grand Dance near to the building supplies. Folks, there she is, my good friend. Uh, no, she's not there. That's why you're looking at. Uh, here she is, Gemma Bain Thomas, former cabinet secretary, now a consultant. And uh, so far, we've not been able to have her two sisters, her two colleagues, Laurel and Janice, join us. But we're going to try and get to them, and uh, hope, hopefully, before the end of the program. Good morning, Gemma. Good morning, Uncle George. How are you this morning? I am fine, thank God. I can see that on your face. Yeah, you know, <laughs> despite all the challenges, man, I, I keep on trucking. It's yeah. a lot of challenges, yeah. but we all have to keep trucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, what were you guys going to be talking about this morning? What had you planned to talk about this morning? We, we had planned to continue the discussion on the coronavirus which has now been renamed um, COVID-19 COVID virus. And specifically, we were going to look at the state of preparedness and the fact that we need to be more prepared at this point in time than we are. Mm -hmm. And preparedness is not only for the medical aspect of handling the virus, but also for handling the economic aspect of the virus. Because as we explained in one of our earlier programs, the economic impact could be just as devastating as the, the, the virus itself. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's something we could better afford at this point in time, isn't it? it right. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and we know, George, that disease has always been part of the human experience. There, have, there has been a number of epidemics that the World Health Organization declared, eh? like between 2011 and now, we had Ebola, SARS, we had a number of these. But with the COVID-19, there is heightened risk. And because of the, the pace or the rate of spread, it is even more important to be addressed at this point in time. And as you would have heard within the last 48 hours, it's right in, almost in the Caribbean. It is, it is in the Caribbean, yeah. in St. Martin. And it has been the experience, George, that when we have these epidemics or pandemics, that the poor generally suffer the most. And because the poor suffer the most, and the impacts 
is profound when we have fragile and vulnerable settings like we have in our countries, where poverty is high and you have weak health systems, the impact is always greater. Mm -hmm. And so there is a need for good governance and for the building of trust. Because a lot of people do not trust the institutions. Thank you for bringing that up, Janice. Uh, not Janice, uh, Janice, uh, Janice is on my mind this morning. Yes, yes, yes. But let me ask you, you talked about trust, trust, trust. How confident are you that, that we are capable, when, when the rest of the world, you know, all the experts out there in the United States, Europe, Europe, Europe they seem to be in confusion. You're trying, trying to present uh, a story uh, that does that not, does not cause, cause too much hysteria. hysteria. Mm -hmm. How well are those little people here in the area? How capable do you think we are when they say to speak with so much authority? Mm -hmm. We can speak with as much authority, but we have to be prepared. Now, I saw an article on your website last night, an op ed about CARICOM yeah. and the coronavirus, written by one I think is Michael Roberts. Okay. And he had some insightful pieces as to whether CARICOM is on the right track. Because uh, we seem to be saying a lot, but what is our state of readiness? And it also goes back to trust. Now, if we are speaking, if, if, if our designated spokesperson in Grenada on health, I assume the Minister for Health is speaking, and our people are bypassing what we are saying in-house and looking to Facebook and the web, and some of these sites are not credible. We should be taking information from credible sites because there is a relationship between trust and the whole management of this coronavirus. And so, there has been a breakdown, we all know, there has been a breakdown in trust as it relates to public institutions' ability to function effectively. But, if misinformation continues, then the situation worsens. Um, Dean um, Dean 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 this morning you have mentioned the word trust, which is so ironic because only this morning we began the program with Anthony and Briggs doing a piece on trust. Remember when you went to the shop when you were a little girl, you went you to trust, trust some oil and trust, 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 trust me. You said trust, trust me. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> Gemma, you know, it's, it's very sad that we have come to that point in the Caribbean and I guess around the world as well. But people have been disappointed and lied to so many times by the authorities that while the information they're putting out might be bang on and accurate, no trust. No, the lack of trust. And so they're spinning down with money. And so we have to start building that trust. And to build the trust, we have to be honest yeah. with the populace and provide the populist with information as much as possible, even before it happens and what we propose to do. So for example, we have the gov.gd website and information is available there. But we need to look to the, at the information available there to see if it is in a form that the ordinary person could utilize and internalize and fully understand. Is it that we are providing information after the fact? Maybe we need to provide the information before the fact. So on the government website, we would know that three Italians were quarantined, some people came in, coming from China were quarantined and so forth. But what is the state of people? How are we preparing? Should um, an infected person land on our shores? Do we have a health, a public health plan from the Ministry of Health to deal with these epidemics? What is the role of NADMA? There's a National Emergency Advisory Committee headed by the Prime Minister. All of that should be available to us on the gov.gd 
website. You know that the Minister for Health and his team have been having daily briefings. But still, when you go to Facebook, people are questioning what has been said. So maybe we need to go into a more grassroots form of preparedness at the community level, where we target community leaders, members of civil society organization, churches, schools, and so. And once we are providing the credible information up front, people may become a little more comfortable and uh, be able to walk along with the Prime Minister, the Minister for Health, and the team working on this. I mean, even what is the role of NADMA in all of this? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, boy, I'm just hoping that there will be a change of heart, and if and when there is, I hope it's not going to be too late. Did you see the press conference that uh, CARICOM had, it, Mia Motley had yesterday? A little of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was a very interesting press conference. Yes, the, yes. the chief executive officer of uh, the world's largest cruise line, uh, the Carnival Corporation, mm -hmm. he was there with them and they have pledged to do everything they can to ensure that uh, their passengers is properly screened and, mm -hmm. and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. but, We've also heard by the same token that a number of people have died on the Princess yes. cruise ship. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so the whole aspect of, we have to get back to the aspect of preparedness, George, because we are hearing all of this happening around us. We anticipate. Now we have to say no longer our potential, but the reality is, all, is already on, on, at our shows. And so how prepared are we as a a little small island. Suppose, for example, there's an outbreak in, in a village. Mm -hmm. Are we prepared to quarantine this little village yeah, and provide them with food, everything, whilst that whole village is in quarantine? So we have to prepare before it actually touches our shores. How will we address it? And generally, when Action and investment prior to the emergency is what is essential if you want to have the, po the best possible protection. And we will notice that in the United States, President Trump, he has appointed or designated his vice president as the leader on, on the coronavirus. And similarly, our prime minister, he has to prioritize preparedness using a whole of government approach where all the stakeholders within the public service, the private sector, civil society organizations that will be affected by this virus can come together and have a team approach. If you look at what happened in San Francisco, they did not have a, a reported case, but they declared an emergency so as to be able to activate funds, organizations and so to start preparedness. We need to consider whether it is necessary to, 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 to declare an emergency even before it comes to your show so that you can access funds and have the, the teams mobilized to actually start putting things in place so that we may be able to get funds from PAHO, WHO, World Bank and so but we need to declare an emergency. These are considerations that must be taken into place. And George, you mentioned about, you mentioned about funds. Because uh, we just read the budget for 2020. The budget may not have funds for fighting coronavirus. Because at the time the budget was read, this was not a problem. Now we will have to go back into that budget and we reprioritize monies that were allocated for something else may now have to be channeled to health yeah. so that we can address these issues. You know, the way we spend money around this place, um, I wonder if uh, this health situation will eventually become a priority. You know, we can find money for a lot of other things, but when the things that really matter pop up, we yeah. don't have money. <laughs> yeah. But we'll have to find the money. Yeah. Um, I wanted to share some comments here. Uh, this is your sister. Uh -huh. She is watching you. Oh, no. And she is a doctor, okay? 
We're not listening to Margaret or uh, Arthur or mm-hmm. any of you guys here. We're listening to Bane, Janice Bane now, okay? Mm-hmm. Janice says, public health threat to Grenada is high. And yes, Janice, um, I think the government uh, acknowledges that because I think it was on Friday or Saturday, they uh, they, stated, they issued an alert that the alert's now been raised to harm. Oh, yes. Okay, all right. She goes on to say, now is the time to declare public health emergency management mechanism and activate a multi-sectoral coordination system. Mm-hmm. That's what you're saying, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So that you can actually have a proper plan. So that by the time um, an infected person lands on our show, we're not scrambling to put a plan together. Yeah. But you already have a plan for the management. Should in case, it may not arrive on our show, but nothing wrong in planning. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. being prepared. We may have supplies. If, now, if an infected person goes to our hospital, we should have a plan, how are we addressing this infected mm-hmm. person? She goes on to ask, what has happened to the National Disaster Coordinator? Well, I'm aware that um, there's a health, there used to be a health disaster coordinator. I'm not certain. When I looked at the 2020 So she's budget, asking about the National Disaster Coordinator. The, nas- the National Disaster Coordinator would be NAGMA. Would for, exactly. It would be for NAGMA. But you see, again, when, when you think about disaster coordination, people usually think in terms of an earthquake or a hurricane or a tsunami. Right. Do you think these folks are ready to deal with a health issue like this? But this falls under their... But we need Perfect. to be hearing from NADMA, because under NADMA you have the National Emergency Advisory Committee, which is headed by the Prime Minister. And that committee may have met already to consider, we don't know. You see, that is we're where the trust, hearing. we're not hearing. And that is where the issue of trust comes in. Because if you are not hearing, then you start to assume, you start to speculate. Important. And you start saying, this is not being done, that is not being done. So we need more information. Important point. Important. And we need a designated spokesperson either from NAD, both from NADMA and the Ministry of Health. Because we need to be hearing from both. And although she spoke about the National Disaster Coordinator, yes, the National Disaster Coordinator is overall, but health is a kind of technical area. And when I used to be in the Ministry of Health, one of the recommendations from PAHO was to have a health disaster coordinator. And we did have a health disaster coordinator at one point in time. When I looked at the 2020 budget, I saw that the allocation for that position had been reduced. So I'm not certain whether there's a full-time health disaster coordinator or not. I guess she, Janice is clarifying here. She says National Health Disaster Coordinator. coordinator. Right. Because health... Um, Health disaster can be, you can have a health disaster any day, an accident where people need to be rushed to the hospital. You know, you need coordination as different to when you have an approaching hurricane or a storm or so. And then you need to have your health plan. And within the health plan, you must address the issue of public health emergencies. And the people need to know that. And we need to educate our people at the grassroots level so that they are able to comprehend, understand, and participate. I couldn't agree with you more. We need to educate our people. But you know something, Gemma? Let's be perfectly honest. Grenadians have become very bullheaded. That's true. And you could spend from now until thy kingdom come educating them. They ain't want to hear squat. Until it starts affecting them. Until it starts affecting them. And that is a shame. You know, it's fine to point your fingers at government. Yeah, mm-hmm. they made boo-boo after boo-boo after boo-boo. But you have a lot of information at your disposal, which you're just totally thumbing mm-hmm. your nose at. Mm-hmm. And then when things go, I was going to use a little phrase here. I don't want to use that. When things go sour, you're going to go pointing at the government. 
Mm -hmm. Then nobody can blame but yourself. There's a lot of information out of there, a lot. And yes, I agree. I'm just as confused as you are. There's so much misinformation mingled with so-called accurate information. I say so-called because folks, some of the experts out there or some of the people who speak with authority, like the experts, I'm not sure they understand what the hell is going on. Yeah, because we keep getting changes in information. Yeah. Like the incubation period. At one time we said 14 days and we said 24. And we still have not really have um, standardized what it should be. So the experts are baffled, but the, the CDC website, World Health Organization website, these are the sites we maybe should be looking to for credible information. And even our people should be advised that these are the websites to take information from. And not everything you see on Facebook or being um, forwarded on WhatsApp, uh, you know, or you hear from a friend. Because um, we may just be more confused than this. Because as it is, there is no need to panic or be alarmed at this stage. We do not have a case in Grenada. Yes, the alert is high, but we do not have need for panicking or being alarmed at this stage. Your sister says the Prime Minister needs to appoint a national high-level coordinator with authority to lead a whole-of-government approach. True. Do we know who that is? I'm if you have to think about it, the answer is no. She also goes on to say we need to utilize the schools and religious communities to help communicate to the public. The religious communities. But we need, um, Georgia, we, 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 had a, I, we had a convention yesterday in the Trade Center. One of the first announcements was about the coronavirus. And it said to follow all the advisories that you have received from the Ministry of Health. Sneeze. Everything that you have received. And on, on two other occasions during the convention, the announcement was made. Then we were told that we'd be giving further updates when we attend our meetings. So the, church, the religious body, the church community could do and could play a meaningful role. Should they be represented by a conference of churches? Maybe. Yeah, okay. Janice, one more thing before we go. Um, we started talking about the effect of this on our economy. You know, Grenada seems to be having a pretty damn good year so far this sure. year as far as uh, tourist arrivals, mm -hmm. especially in terms of cruise ship arrivals. Mm -hmm. okay. But this thing could have a heck of an impact. I see that we have had the gall to turn away a couple of cruise ships already, mm -hmm. which uh, I salute the government mm -hmm. for doing. If, if they had good cause to do that, brilliant move, brilliant move. All we need is uh, one, two ships to sneak in here. Mm -hmm. But the season is almost, it's just about two more, two, 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 three more months. It ends at the end of April. At the end of April. So we have a short period of time to go still. But if, um, within that time, with the pace with which this virus is spreading, yeah. it's possible we could have a lot, could happen. a lot could happen and we have cancellations. And tourism is also through the airport mm -hmm. with the flights. And we notice that some, some countries are instituting travel bans. Yeah. So if, if that happens, it affects our tourism. And we depend heavily on tourism for revenue. Mm -hmm. So if that happens, we, we see that our revenue base could be eroded in a short time. And if you looked at when we did the analysis of the, the 2020 budget, we saw that we were depending heavily on grants for the implementation of a lot of our projects. Whilst we can um, speed up the implementation of grant-funded projects, we still have to look at it. The people who are giving us the grants, these countries, they are battling the coronavirus themselves. But in addition to that, aren't grants drying up? Grants are drying up. 
So, so whilst battling the coronavirus, their attention is diverted to their internal sure. issues. Sure. Whilst they will make the time to handle yours, they they concentrating on their internal issues. So we really need a proper economic plan. How are we going to move forward? Yes, we have a budget. And if you look at the budget for 2020, when, they, when Dr. Melville and Ms. Bain did the analysis, we see there wasn't anything transformational about it. It was more, mostly the continuation of routine, little projects and programs. So we really need to take a careful look at how we are doing yeah. in this country. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, Arthur Langan says so true. Gemma, thank you very much. I, I miss uh, my You're a good friend, Janice and Laurel. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But these things do happen, and uh, I look forward to seeing them again uh, next week. So Let's thank you for having me, George. And anytime. Remember, knowledge is power. Absolutely. Experience is the greatest teacher. So stay tuned to Fiscal Alert, Alert, your source of credible, reliable information and analysis. Gemma, Have a good day. Gemma Bain Thomas, <laughs> you heard it from the horse's mouth. <laughs>
with fewer prices changing all the time. How do you know if it is working? We pay attention to the usage history table. Over time, our average usage has decreased. So while Grenada can't control fuel prices, I can conserve energy and save money. Grenelec, energizing our Grenada. Alrighty folks, it's now 13 minutes after the hour. Parting word from the Holy Scriptures. Today's reading comes to you from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 29 to 32. Listen up. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Ephesians chapter 4. Go check it out. On that note, my dear friends, Georgie Porgy is going to say goodbye. Thank you. Nice start to the week, and I certainly look forward to seeing you here every weekday morning, uh, Monday through Friday. Tomorrow, Ray Roberts. On Wednesday, Sharon Roberts. On Thursday, Adam Bajinski. And on Friday, Brian Pitt. Great lineup. God bless you, my friends, and by his grace, we shall see you again at 9 tomorrow.